Why don't we all stand up once again this morning in the house of God to read God's word. We're going to read from the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 24. We're going to read a few verses. Verse 15, then verse 21, then verse 29, and finally we'll read verse 30. Let us all turn our Bibles to the gospel according to St. Matthew. I'm reading from the New King James Version. We've been seeing what Jesus revealed to his apostles on the Mount of Olives about the things that would take place on earth and we are right now experiencing some of those things and there are many things which are yet to take place but they surely will take place and that's why we are seeing from the Bible let us go to Matthew chapter 24 let us first read verse 15 all together therefore when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place whoever reads let him understand let us go to verse 21 for then there will be great tribulation such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time no nor shall ever be let us go to verse 29 immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken continue with verse 30 then the sign of the son of man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory Hallelujah, why don't we clap and bless our hands this morning even as you sit down. Diocletian was a Roman emperor from 284 AD to 305 and in his reign in July 285 AD, he declared Maximilian another colleague from Ilari come as his co-emperor because the Roman Empire was very vast and big and it was almost impossible for them to manage it and there were many problems cropping up and that's why he declared a co-emperor at that time to rule along with him and when he divided this emperor Empire, it was not sufficient, so you had to divide it further again in 18923. And he appointed two Caesars as junior emperors under him to rule over further subdivisions of the east and west. At the time, this was called as a tetrarchy. And he first appointed of the office of Caesar Constantius, and his second appointee was Galerius. After his father's death, Constantius' death in 306, Constantine was acclaimed as the emperor by the army at York, or known in that day as Eborakam. And because of this, it started a civil war as Diocletian was falling sick and he wanted to retire and he could not take care of their empire and he was someone who persecuted the Jews and the Christians at that time almost called as the one of the greatest persecutions that took place and in this civil war Constantine had to fight with the son of Maximian who was Maxentius the historian Isubius of Caesarea gives us a detailed account of something that took place at that time. He tells that he heard it from the Emperor Constantine himself about a vision that he saw. Constantine, the Roman Caesar at that time, with his army was marching when this problem was taking place and when he looked up at the sun, he saw a cross of light above it 
and he saw the meaning at that time which meant through this sign you shall conquer he did not really understand what it meant he was unsure of the meaning of this operation but in the following night he had a dream in which Jesus Christ explained to him that he should use the sign against his enemies this then became his military standard and he had his soldiers paint this symbol of Christ even upon their shields there are even coins which bear this symbol which can be found there are many other locations in which these symbols could be found even now and so Constantine now set towards Rome to meet with Maxentius where he was preparing for war and he was preparing for a siege he was stockpiling all the food and the grain so that when the siege is set up when Constantine reaches Rome and he camps all around blocking all the supply he would be able to stay inside and fight him that's what his initial plan was but surprising to everyone due to his reading of a particular book which told him that the enemy of Rome would be destroyed he misinterpreted at the time he left Rome and chose to meet with Constantine in open battle the ancient sources say that they attribute this decision that Maxentius took to be a divine intervention at that time so both of them now meet over the river Tiber and the Milivian bridge and it's at this battle that took place on 28th October 312 AD that the two armies clashed and Constantine won a this is the victory why I'm sharing this with you is this brought about such a great change in the empire because of the sign that he saw according to the chronicles of Eusebius it is said that this battle marked the beginning of Constantine's conversion to Christianity he was a pagan just like other Roman emperors were at that time but because of this sign which he saw and the victory won after that he was able to become the one chief emperor of the entire Roman Empire and so he ruled from AD 306 to 337 he is the first Roman Emperor as you know to convert to Christianity and he played a vital role in the proclamation of the edict of Milan which took place in 313 because of Diocletian who consulted certain people and started the great persecution against the church Constantine when he came after him he declared this edict which is a edict which accepted Christianity and it gave declaration throughout the empire that there would be tolerance for Christianity in the entire Roman Empire and he was the one who sent even his mother who went on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem in Israel and he was the one who made the church of the Holy Sepulchre to be built at that time at the site of Jesus tomb in Jerusalem we've been seeing how God works in amazing marvelous mysterious ways with signs and wonders the Bible is a book of supernatural incidents which will take place the Bible reveals to us how God with a supernatural power has created the heavens and the earth man with his darkened mind would say that everything happens naturally normally there is nothing supernatural because he thinks everything has to be brought into a laboratory to be checked and verified and only then accepted there are many things which cannot be tried and tested in a laboratory you cannot ask God to come and give his blood so they can check and see 
that is true and that is real nor the nor can they ask the devil to do the same and because of that they are blinded to the larger reality of this universe that god is the creator jesus intervenes in the affairs of men and he has gone to prepare a place for each and every one of you and he will come and receive the church he will receive each and every one of you he has been preparing that place for such a long time how wonderful how marvelous it will be and jesus in matthew chapter 24 verse 29 the verse that we read said that immediately after the tribulation the sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken and when that happens this is the great wrath of god upon the wicked who have murdered and killed the saints of god who are there left on earth and so this is the judgment on the wicked that takes place and when the judgment is completed then according to verse 30 the sign will be seen in heaven a sign will appear in heaven that's why i shared with you about the sign that constantine saw how it changed the entire largest known empire at that time and brought in a emperor or king to rule that known empire at that time just like how before jesus will come a sign will appear god is a god who uses the space as a signboard for man in genesis chapter 1 verse 14 the bible tells us how god created the heavens and the earth and he said let the lights be in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs god is the one who placed all these stars and the constellations and the lights that are there to be signs in genesis 9 13 we see god saying i set my rainbow in the cloud and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth whenever it rains after the rain is done with it then we see the rainbow in the sky and that shows that god remembers his covenant and he has stopped the rains it is not going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights like how it did the flood that took place the days of noah which is not a myth which is not a fairy tale which really took place and there are evidence about it all over the world the evidence of the flood can be found even on top of mount himalayas one day we will see about all that evidence the sky itself speaks to all of us the sky speaks to all of mankind man has to recognize and accept it psalm 19 verse 1 king david writes and says the heavens declare the glory of god and the firmament shows his handiwork they've got to see and realize that this is the work of god verse 2 he says day unto day they utter speech and night unto night they reveal knowledge there is no speech no language where their voice is not heard they're speaking they speak to men they're constantly speaking it is speaking throughout the earth every day and every night no one can stand before the judgment throne of god and accuse god saying i did not know no one told me i was not given this opportunity i'm sure everyone was born on earth at least once they would have known or realized or looked at the sky in the daytime or in the night don't tell me there is not a single person in the world who's not seen the sun who's not seen the moon and has not thought about it god has given us the ability to think the creatures of the earth know when the sun rises up the very first rays of the sunlight they start singing the birds start chirping and we can see that they are preparing and get ready for the day they are excited they are happy they are expecting wonderful things to take place they start the day with joy and 
with rejoicing and gladness you can see them flying around and full of life and energy early in the morning we need to listen to the rays of the sun that are speaking to us that are revealing knowledge to us no language can be a hindrance for it verse 4 it says the line has gone throughout all the earth and their words to the end of the world all will see christ sign in the sky a sign will appear and they will see the sign of christ in the sky last week i told you how the sky will be rolled up the sun will not shine the moon will not shine because of the judgment on the wicked the constellations the stars and the heavens will all not shine their light because they are protesting they are accusing the wicked and saying you did not glorify god saying god is the one who created the heavens god is the one who set this light and they therefore stop shining there will be darkness over the world and in this darkness a red blood moon will pass over in the night a yuri golish moon which will be terrifying men will feel the wrath of god and the judgment of god being poured out on them at that time no one will say i do not know they will know it for sure the bible says that that's what we saw last week and in this kind of a atmosphere in this kind of a situation in the dark sky where they will find it difficult to know when the day starts when the day ends it's almost like a night for 24 hours a day of night and a night of night suddenly a sign will appear a tearing away of the sky a bright light instead of the sun instead of the moon instead of the stars the sign of christ will appear all men will see it at that time and that's when they'll be shaken by it jesus says that matthew 24 30 the words that we said where he says the sign of the son of man will appear in heaven there was a sign at christ's birth do not marvel wondering what is this strange it is not strange when jesus was one matthew chapter 2 verse 9 the bible tells us about how wise men came from the east and it says that they said behold the star which they had seen in the east went before them they came asking where is he who is born king of the jews they came from the east they were not from the nation of israel they were not the jews they saw the star in the east and they came and traveled to worship jesus christ they have traveled maybe even two years to come and find that location and when they could not find him in the capital city of israel they saw the star moving and it guided them right down to bethlehem and where they saw the young child they fell down and worshiped jesus at his feet and presented gifts to him they were able to recognize this sign in the sky all men will be able to see this sign that will come at that time have no doubt about it god speaks through his creation the very heavens have been created to show man his power to show man his glory show man of his infinite power and wisdom and knowledge of all the star systems that are there in this galaxy of all the billions of galaxies that are there you can see the vastness of the space we are just not even a speck in this large universe that's how big and awesome and great his creation is you got to see how great he would be to be able to create something like this that's why he uses a sign in the sky and it is nothing simple nothing 
which is going to be incredible for him nothing which is going to be difficult for him it is not going to be something that is going to be very strange it is something which is very normal for god uses supernatural things to speak that's what the bible says the jews seek a sign they have seen signs and we are now seeing the signs of the last days we've got to understand the signs that are taking place the situations that are there on earth strange things the things which took place in the days of noah are happening all over the world in the coming weeks maybe we shall see it. it might shake you when you hear the things that are happening to human beings how the devil and his kingdom and the demonic spirits are interfering and working in the lives of human beings and doing experiments there have been evidence and proof i can even show you videographic evidence of these things that have happened to human beings because they are preparing for the last days they will come up with beasts as the bible said as we saw they'll be released in the last days which will torment and they'll be responsible for killing a quarter of those who are there on earth and the wicked will know that this is the sign of christ this is what the christians have been speaking about everyone knows what the sign of christ is the sign of messiah the sign of the bible is that is a cross they wear it around the neck they put it on their homes it can be seen all over the world they will be at once able to identify what the church spoke what the christian spoke what they heard is now come true and it's too late for them why because they've already received the mark of the beast that's why jesus says thirdly in this statement in matthew chapter 24 verse 30 all people who lament and wail all the tribes of the earth will mourn because they had all received the mark of the beast their right hand and on their forehead and now according to his word there is no salvation there is no hope for them because they modified themselves at that time zechariah 12 verse 20 it says they will look on me whom they pierced yes they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn bible tells us how saul ravages the church the very first church that was set up in acts chapter 8 from verse 1 onwards saying that there was a great persecution that arose against the church which was at jerusalem and saul made havoc of the church entering every house and dragging off men and women committing them to prison at that time he was breathing insults and murder and threatening the people and he got letters to go to damascus and bring those who were of the way of the lord jesus christ men and women bound to jerusalem and as he went on this journey you know that suddenly a light shone around him from heaven and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him saul saul why are you persecuting me and he said who are you lord then the lord said i am jesus whom you are persecuting it is hard for you to kick against the goads when anyone hurts any one of you they are hurting not just you but they are hurting Christ when anyone persecutes the church they are not just persecuting an organization or a group of people or not they are persecuting Jesus Christ he feels the pain that you feel when people do wrong things to you do not think that he is not aware of it he is connected you are the body if there is a hurt or a wound you hit yourself against something sharp and even if it's a small nick or a small cut you know there is no blood sometimes you would have just 
hit your toe stub your toe against the furniture and it pains and though it might be a small toe the whole body sits down gets a chair and you call the whole house and you tell everybody oh my toe is paining and show to everybody saying oh can you see look at it how is it look the colors changed see it is swollen and sometimes some people show and there is nothing they say no but still it is paining the others who see oh, okay where is it you got to identify but they'll say no no it is paining here makes the entire body of that person sit down because the entire body feels the pain you're the body of Christ and when you get hurt in any way not just physical hurt even if people use hurtful words against you and you are hurt in your heart and you feel being oppressed in your mind Jesus Christ feels the same and now he is coming and he's put a sign in the sky and the people of the world who killed and murdered the innocent at that time the saints of God because they refused to worship the beast because they refused to worship and get the mark of the beast now will know that Christ is coming and he is going to judge the wicked that is why they will lament and wail Jesus is aware and he will step in at that time all will see that's what he says Matthew chapter 24 verse 30 all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see no one will miss it the first time he comes to take the church in the rapture that's the next most important event that you need to be ready and prepared for what is your next most important festival next most important appointment with Christ apart from the time we meet as a church is being taken up to be with the Lord in the clouds in the heavens but that will happen in almost a secretive fashion Jesus himself says in Revelation chapter 16 verse 15 behold I'm coming as a thief blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame he'll come in a way that no one will realize he's not going to set foot on earth he's going to be there in the clouds and all of us who are here on earth will be caught up after those who rise up from the dead who died in Christ are also taken up people will not see that rapture take place Jesus says in Luke chapter 17 verse 34 I tell you in that day there will be two men in one bed the one will be taken and the other will be left imagine the state of this man who's left behind he'll get up in the morning and then he'll see someone disappeared from the house the doors will be locked from inside they've gone to sleep with that person but when they get up in the morning that person is not there it'll hit the heart it'll be something that'll cause such a shock it could be people of your family it could be if there is anyone not saved it could even be an unsaved husband or a wife or a father or a mother it could be anybody who rejected Jesus Christ see how this could be shocking you've got to that's why prepare and pray for them pray for the salvation of each and every one of your family each and every day of your life pray for the salvation of every relative that they would not be left behind because at that time they'll realize this they will have to wail and moan like as if someone has died at that time even a physical death will have closure they will see the body and the funeral service and the burial service and then the thanksgiving service will be something that will help the person to cope with that loss of that dear family member but in this situation suddenly get up in the morning someone whom you love might not be there if you're left behind imagine you leave them behind how terrible it will be for you go there and go to heaven and find oh no where is 
this family member of mine where is my father where is my mother where is my husband where is my wife are all my children here where are they pray for them now is the time these are the days given to us so that they will be reached pray for everyone with whom you are in contact with that their eyes would be open speak to them share with them hold back nothing declare the truth let them know what god has said in his word has come true do not miss these days of opportunity given unto men because very soon people will forget all this that took place everyone is fighting and getting ready and wanting to get back to that old normal it'll be at that such a situation when everyone thinks that everything is normal and everything is set low and they relax and they give up those who have started coming to church now suddenly maybe they'll drop and say okay everything is normal now i'm busy i'm getting back to my old way of life when all the churches are opened and everyone will rush in and then everything will stop that's what happened in certain countries like united states after the 9/11 the collapse of the twin tower they say all the churches were filled up and people were rushing and completely packed in but after a few months everyone forgot about it the same way the days will come they will forget and when unexpected time like a thief in the night the rapture and christ will come in a moment in a twinkling of an eye first corinthians chapter 15 verse 52 who says in a twinkling of an eye you could be seeing and talking at that time and suddenly that person disappears jesus will come the second time in a fashion everyone will see they will all see because he'll come on the clouds he said they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven he will descend in this dark night sky that darkness that is there as the sign of the cross flashes and shines bright suddenly they will see the clouds of heaven coming down and jesus descending upon it he went up to heaven he ascended in a cloud so this is not something which is going to be difficult for him to do or perform the apostles and the disciples were there gathered on the mount of olives and it says he was taken up and a cloud received him and two men stood by in white apparel and they spoke and said this same jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven clouds are on god as he moves moses met the lord in a cloud in exodus chapter 34 verse 5 it says now the lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there these are not clouds of earth because at the time there would hardly be any clouds on earth because the wind would have stopped and the weather patterns and the seasons of the earth would have been highly affected these are the clouds of heaven that's what it said in this verse matthew chapter 24 verse 30 the son of man will be seen coming on the clouds of heaven these are not the clouds of the earth daniel 7 13 it tells about how i was watching in the night vision and behold one like the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven he could make out these clouds were different from the clouds that we see in the sky these clouds move in a different fashion and in, in a different manner isaiah 19 1 it says behold the lord rides on a swift cloud he will come into egypt the idols of egypt will totter at his presence and the heart of egypt will melt in its midst it's a swift cloud that moves it moves like a chariot it can turn left and right it is like a vehicle that carries the lord jesus christ 
It's not like a slow moving cloud that you see in the sky going just in one direction without suddenly changing its course. This is a different cloud. It will break up from high above and will come down right down to the earth. And all will see Christ's power at that time as He comes. He comes with power. The first time He came as Mashiach ben Yosef. The Babylonian Talmud in Sukkah 52 verse 1, it is said about how for the Messiah, the son of Joseph will be slain as it is written. He came the first time his first manifestation on earth was like Joseph the one who was carried as a slave and went to Egypt he was slow, sold there he was by himself and he was persecuted by his brothers given up by his family and he worked in a strange land as a slave, as a servant, that's how Jesus came the very first time. Philippians chapter 2 was five onwards. It tells about how Jesus Christ came, leaving aside the form of godliness. He came down to earth and made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, coming in the likeness of men found an appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross that's how he came the first time he came he washed his disciples feet he rode a donkey into Jerusalem but the second time he comes he's gonna come on a white horse he came as a humble servant he carried the cross when they came to capture him, the Garden of Gethsemane, he refused to call 12 legions of angels to support him. But this time he will not be in such a state. He will come as Mashiach ben Dawud. It says, Luke chapter 1, verse 32, about Jesus he will be great and will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David so he'll come as the son of David the second time to take his rightful throne and he'll not come alone the first time he was born lowly in a manger no one knew that he was born except for those wise men who saw the sign the entire nation should have been rejoicing at his birth they were not even aware they were not bothered he was born in a shed with no place available for him in a nice room inside a house but the second time he comes he's gonna be coming with innumerable angels second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 7 and 8 it says when the Lord Jesus Christ is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire that's how he's going to come Isaiah 66 15 says for behold the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire for by his fire and by his sword he will judge they will see this remarkable spectacle that will take place it will be something that everyone has to behold at that time a fire burning all around fiery angels all around he himself will be God who is enveloped in fire his presence will make everything the atmosphere burn at that time he will come with such great power that they will mourn and they will weep at that time looking at his power and he said he's not just going to come with power he's going to come this time with great glory and all will see his great glory not just glory but great glory 
for God his father will give him the glory that he himself has that's what Jesus says in Matthew 16 27 It'll be such a glory that will shake men at that time even in the Old Testament when the Israelites saw him on Mount Sinai they said this and it is written in Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 23 so it was when you heard the voice from the midst of the darkness when the mountains were burning with fire that you came near to me all the heads of your tribes and your elders and you said surely the Lord our God has shown us his glory and his greatness they saw the mountain burning with fire at that time and they heard his voice in the midst of the fire we have seen this day that God speaks with man yet he still lives that was their biggest notice that they took place that was something that they marveled at this mountain on fire and God speaks from the midst of this fire and when they heard it they were so shaken up they thought they will die but they did not die and that shocked them that's why they say we have seen this day that God speaks with man yet he still lives in the presence of such great glory such fires after they heard that voice of God they thought they're gonna die just hearing the voice alone imagine at this time Christ will come with all his glory how it would be now therefore why should we die for this great fire will consume us though they did not die they're saying let us not experience this in the future we thought we'll die when we saw the mountain on fire and his voice speaking from the midst of the mountain but we did not die but still we don't want that experience again because it was so terrifying for them that's where they say in verse 25 now therefore why should we die for this great fire will consume us if we hear the voice of the Lord our God anymore then we shall die they were not gonna die but they thought they're gonna die they would have been shaken up right to the center of their beings their bones would have been on fire for who is there of all flesh who has heard the voice of the living God speaking from the midst of fire as we have and lived they felt that power that glory in such a fashion and manner they thought no flesh will survive the presence of God at that time that's the glory of your God oh what an awesome God he will come and you will all come with him riding with him on white horses at that time hallelujah why don't you clap your hands and give glory to the lamb of god oh to jesus christ the son of god oh let us all stand up at this time we've been seeing the cosmic terrestrial order of events how jesus said that the beginning of the birth pangs would take place when all those signs will come to pass and then the end of the age will come and the rapture of Christ's disciples would be what will start the new age of the Antichrist, the idol and the false prophet who will be there in the temple in the Holy of Holies. And then the great tribulation will come and after that will be the judgment of the wicked. And then what we saw this morning, you've got to be aware that you're in a supernatural war that is going on. The devil is trying to pluck you away from the hands of God. He cannot take you away from his hands, nor will God let go of you. But you got to choose to remain there do not be tricked by the devil to walk away his deception is his strategy of fighting against you he didn't come with a sword he didn't come and pull even the garden of eden and fight with her or punch with her if he had come he would have definitely failed because they were in that state of glory at that time the devil could not even touch eve at that time because the glory of god was upon them he would have been crushed at that time that's why he didn't come and fight with her but his war with mankind was through deception that is his biggest tool even now deceive tell lies and trick and make man make the wrong choice make man leave God and walk away believing a lie and thinking that God is bad and that devil is good and following him and that's how they lost that is how the devil was with mankind you've got to know that you got to be aware of his devices his strategies his trickery how he's using situations and 
people how he can use even material things and one wrong decision is all that is needed he doesn't come and punch he doesn't come and fight he doesn't come and knock you down all the time yes there can be wars that take place with direct confrontation with evil spirit but majority of the time he comes with just a deception you just make a wrong decision at that time it might not look bad he took a wrong decision they took the fruit and they ate of it at the time it didn't look bad at all one wrong step at the time when the devil comes to deceive you it looked fine and all right but in the end will be death you got to know that the war is going on between devil and man and we saw the details about the antichrist that he'll be cruel you need to escape this time and this period and the false prophet will also be there who will have that same authority i'm looking at this week after week so that every one of you who see it even if you see it or hear it for the very first time know that these things will take place that you prepare to escape that you do not receive the mark or worship the beast for these are the deal breakers this will separate you from god this will make you identify yourself with the devil for if you receive the mark or worship the beast you will be part of that great tribulation as jesus opens the seals and the antichrist is loosened and wars and murder and famine and hunger and death and hell walk on earth then many will perish at that time and the vengeance will be taken on the wicked and jesus has warned us ahead that's why he said see i have told you beforehand again i tell you this morning be baptized in the holy spirit for jesus said that in this all of it discourse that the lamps need to have the fire burning in them be profitable unto him the same teaching he says in matthew chapter 25 verse 40 non was that the kingdom of heaven is like a servant who's been given goods we've all been given gifts by god let us use it for when jesus comes he will sit on the throne of judgment and judge each and every one of us for the works that we have done that's why he's telling us so that we'll be aware of it in matthew 25 verse 30 he says cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth let us never go to that state where we become unprofitable unto a god a tree with no fruit in it but let us choose to bear fruit make the decision even this morning i tell you be saved be born again be baptized in water be baptized in the holy spirit take up something do something for christ at least on a weekly basis think what have you done in the last week for jesus christ in your life if you're not done in the last week most likely you might not be able to do it in the coming week but let it not be so make the decision saying by this week i would do something for the lord that i can say this is what i've done for him let us all at this time conclude this service by reading psalm 91 let us once again dedicate ourselves let us continue to dwell in the secret place of the most high let us abide under the shadow of the almighty we do so by first connecting with jesus and reading verse 2 where it says i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god and him i will trust so let us therefore confess this once again let us rededicate recommit ourselves oh read it aloud verse 2 first before we start the entire chapter psalm 91 verse 2 i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him i will trust let us now read from verse 1 psalm 91 he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him i will trust surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge his truth shall be your shield and buckler you shall not be afraid of the terror by night 
nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked because you made the Lord who is my refuge even the most high your dwelling place no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot because he has set his love upon me therefore I will deliver him I will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation why don't you clap your hands and thank God for his promise for his word for his protection for his presence for his power oh thank you father in heaven for keeping us safe and giving us this day and oh lord you led us even in the last six months through this old situation of darkness that has enveloped the world you've kept your word and your promises they are true if you're alive and well here this morning standing and and are able it is because of you oh god we thank you for that first and thank you for each and everything you've done for each and every one of us even in this time in this situation oh thank you for your power that has been revealed thank you for all your blessings thank you for the light that has shined oh, upon each and every one pray that you'll continue to do lead each and every one let your promises continue to be true in their life pray that your protection would be upon them let your blood oh lord jesus cover each and every one here oh and each and everyone watching let your name oh lord be a strong and mighty tower let each and everyone here dwell in the secret place oh far away from the reach of the enemy oh that you'll hide them under the shadow of your wings pray that you'll provide for them bless them in every part and area of their life oh lord as they hold on to you as they follow you and as oh lord they serve you pray that each and everyone here would be profitable that they'll keep the fire burning oh that they'll do wonderful all our things for you oh jesus pray that all our every hindrance and barrier against them be removed destroy every plan of the devil against them in the mighty name of jesus pray that you'll give them victory each and every day oh lord oh bless them once again this morning in the name of the father in the name of the son in the name of oh the holy spirit bless each and every one of you in jesus mighty name god bless you clap your hands and Thank God and give him praise and glory in his house.